Hola friends of cocktails, I'm Kevin Kos, and today we're making the classic cocktail from Peru, the Pisco Sour. But we'll also make the variation of the Pisco Sour from Chile. Now before I get bombarded with comments from angry Peruvians, we'll just highlight the differences between the two versions and the Piscos made in Peru and Chile. And yes, I think that Peru is the home of the original Pisco. The International Pisco Sour Day is celebrated on the first Saturday of February, so that means you have some time to find yourself a bottle of Pisco and make one for yourself. I'll show you how, because it's cocktail time. So, if you've never heard of Pisco, what is it? It is a distilled spirit from fermented grapes, first made in the 16th century by Spanish settlers in Peru. While both Peru and Chile claim it to be their national spirit, they make it with different techniques, but use the same name. And that's the main problem. The first mention of Aguardiente de Pisco, or fiery water from Pisco, dates back to 1764, when both Peru and Chile were a part of Vice Royalty of Peru. But the name for this brandy came from the port of Pisco, which is located on the coast of Peru in the valley of Pisco, by the river named, you guessed it, Pisco. Well, you might think that settles the matter. It doesn't. So let's check out some differences between the two. Peruvian Pisco has strict rules for its production. Eight different grape varieties can be used to make one of three categories – Puro, Acholado or Mosto Verde. The law requires only one distillation in the pot stills, after which the pisco goes straight into glass, copper or stainless steel containers to rest for three months. There, the flavors blend and marinate naturally. No coloring, flavoring or even water may be added. This means Peruvian pisco stays at the same ABV content from the moment it leaves the still, enters the bottle and finally your glass. The skill of distillers to achieve that kind of precision is something worth appreciating when enjoying pisco, either neat or in a cocktail. And the low distillation strength with the additional resting period results in a very strong fruity flavor and a smooth, rather than a fiery sensation. Due to single distillation and flavors and compounds coming off the still, this one actually has a slight chocolate bitterness and hints of tobacco, which you wouldn't expect from an unaged spirit. Unlike Peruvian grapes, which are typically grown in a higher humidity climate on the coast, Chilean producers grow grapes in desert conditions with extremely low humidity. They have 13 varieties to choose from, with the majority being produced from the aromatic Muscat group. Additionally, several distillations are allowed, which remove more of the impurities, but also flavor and aroma, while raising alcohol content at the same time. These piscos are aimed at vodka lovers. ABV content on which the classifications of Chilean Pisco are based can be changed by adding water. Unlike in Peru, aging in wooden barrels is allowed, which results in golden-colored Pisco with notes and character coming from the wood, playing to the cognac and armoniac lovers. And while Peruvian Pisco has a reputation of being of higher quality, there are some wonderful Chilean Piscos out there for you to try. Pisco control, which we'll use today, is rich in fruity aroma and flavor, with hints of apples and pears. It's fresh, citrusy and has a long aromatic aftertaste of Muscat grapes. Now that we've covered that, let's take a look at the national cocktails from both Peru and Chile. The Pisco Sour. For the Chilean version, we'll add lime juice and simple syrup, while the Peruvians also add an egg white and some bitters as garnish. Let's start in Peru, since it was in Lima that the Pisco Sour was created. But not by the man you might think, if you already know this cocktail. American bartender Victor Morris is widely regarded as the inventor of the Pisco Sour by most cocktail historians. But in 2012, Peruvian writer Raúl Escobar posted a vintage pamphlet titled Nuevo Manual de Cocina la Criola – New Manual of Creole Cooking, published in Lima in 1903. On page 32, there is a recipe simply titled Cocktail. It called for an egg white, a glass of pisco, a teaspoon of fine sugar and a squeeze of lime. It was said to open up a good appetite. Sounds like a pisco sour to me. Let's make it. If nothing else, Morris, who moved to Peru in 1903 and opened the Morris's bar in Lima in 1916, can most likely be credited with giving it the name Pisco Sour and making it popular among his patrons. His saloon was a popular spot for the Peruvian upper class and English-speaking foreigners. The star ingredient in this is of course the Peruvian pisco, 60 ml or 2 ounces of Barsol Pisco Quebranta. And to make it a sour cocktail, we'll add the perfect balance of sweet and sour in equal parts. 
First, 22.5 ml or 3 quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. For the sour component, Peruvians would use limon, a lemon brought to South America by the Spanish in the 15th century, which has since developed a citrus resembling the key lime. While some bartenders split the sour component to equal parts lemon and lime, I'll just go for lime juice. Next up, the egg white. This is what separates the Peruvian and Chilean pisco sours in the most obvious way. This will give the cocktail a nice frothy head with a silky texture and mouthfeel. If you want to make it vegan, use aquafaba instead. Check out the Clover Club episode, when we talked about measuring egg whites. If you're making this at home, you can also add a few drops of saline solution, to highlight the flavors, but we'll try to stick to the original recipe. To get the best result, I'll do a reverse dry shake, so I'm shaking the cocktail with ice first, to chill and dilute the drink. The second shake is done without ice, and this gives us that thick crown after we pour the cocktail in the glass. Speaking of, thank you. The final touch is a few drops of Angostura bitters. Amargo chuncho, bitters from Peru are traditionally used, but Angostura is what's used worldwide. This will look good and also help with masking the aroma of the egg whites. Perfect. Peruvian bartenders usually made the pisco sours in a blender nowadays, but I prefer this old school approach with a well shaken cocktail. Before we make the second one, let's try it out. Angostura is doing his job, so the first thing you'll get is the aromatic bitters. The taste is what you'd expect from a sour cocktail, citrusy and full bodied, but pisco gives it a nice fruity character with a subtle earthy note. The right amount of sweetness and the creamy mouthfeel make this a really well rounded cocktail that Peru has a good reason to be so proud of. That is why they created the National Pisco Sour Day in 2003, to be celebrated on the first Saturday of February. Pisco lovers across the world are joining in to what is now known as the International Pisco Sour Day. But like we mentioned, it's not just Peru that claims the Pisco Sour of their national cocktail. We're not picking any sides here, so let's try the Chilean version as well. We'll shake this cocktail as well, but we'll use the Parisian shaker. While I love the way it looks, it can be a tricky one to open after shaking. That's because when the air inside of a shaker gets cold, it contracts, creating a vacuum and causing these two tight fitting components to get stuck. So make sure to chill the shaker first, so there is less of a temperature shock. We'll start with Chile and Pisco. Poet Pablo Neruda said that Pisco is a million rays of sunshine in a single drop. I'm not sure how the rays of sunshine scale up, but we'll add 60 ml or 2 ounces. Next up, sugar. And while powdered sugar is often used in Chile, I'll go with sugar in a liquid form, because it's easier to get the ratios just right. 22.5 ml or 3 quarters of an ounce. Before we get lime juice, we'll get our garnish ready. This does need much explanation, but always peel the fruit for the garnish before squeezing it, so you use all of the fruit. We'll add 22.5 ml or 3 quarters of an ounce. Pica limes or limon de pica are traditionally used for the Chilean pisco sour, named after the oasis town of Pica in Atacama Desert in Chile. Pica limes were also used in Elliot Stubbs' 1872 recipe for the whiskey sour which he made in a port city that is now a part of Chile. He was later misquerited as using pisco and creating a pisco sour and giving Chile the bragging rights. But to get a better claim over the name pisco, Chile actually changed the name of a small town of La Union to Pisco El Cuy in 1936. Even so, Chile is still the biggest importer of Peruvian pisco, but by law it has to be labeled as aguardiente, which is a generic term for high proof distilled spirit or destilado de uva, a grape distillate. 
Meanwhile, Peru has banned the import of Chile and Pisco altogether. Oh well, more for us. Finish with a spray of oils from the lime peel and that's it. A lot of history in both of the cocktails we made today. Let's try the Chile and Pisco sour. Fresh and citrusy aroma thanks to the lime garnish, while the perfect balance of lime and sugar adds an additional layer of freshness to the wonderfully fruity chili and pisco we used. A slight floral aftertaste lingers after the sweet and sour notes leave the palate. While there are some similarities to its Peruvian counterpart, the two cocktails are still different enough that there should be a place for both of them in your cocktail repertoire. But which one's better? Only people of Peru and Chile can say that. But it seems unlikely for them to settle this dispute anytime soon. Since we've made it this far in the video, here's another holiday you can celebrate with Pisco. In response to the National Pisco Sour Day in Peru, Chile decided to mark February 8th as Piscola Day. So mix your Pisco with cola, throw in a lime wedge and enjoy. I think that covers everything. But let me know in the comments if there's something I got wrong or left out. I'll see you all next week, when I'll give you an idea for what you can make on Valentine's Day. It's going to be something special. Until then, cheers! Because it's cocktail time. <laughs> because I said it two times uh, yourself, I just add something. <laughs> it's okay, because of the music. Next week, when I give you an idea for what you make, for what you can make on Valentine's Day. Maybe something special. Until then, cheers! <laughs> Saved by the bell! This is the end of the video. If you want to see more cocktail recipes and more bloopers, check this out. And think about subscribing. Thanks for watching!